<clears throat> What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another late night in the brew lab with me, Lone Fox, your brewmaster in chief. And tonight in the brew lab, another week, another standard meta challenge as far as um, Magic the Gathering Online is concerned. And of course, I have to thank uh, Fire Shoes at Fire Shoes or Robert Taylor on Twitter for being very forthcoming with these results. Um, I have mentioned this on the channel many times, but Robert Taylor, uh, aka Fire Shoes, um, will be always very on point when um, whenever there's a new batch of these uh, standard challenges, or you know, they do it for every different format, Pioneer and things, whatever they have on MTGO. But of course, my channel focuses mostly on standards, so I I can't wait for him to post these articles because. It's a very good way of um, keeping tabs on, on the meta. And uh, sometimes I'll pick a deck that didn't necessarily come first place, especially once the meta starts to get a little bit stale. Uh, I, I'm not just going to go and pick the obvious top deck in the format. I might go and scurry around for something that's a little bit more unique and an outlier that would have arrived in the top eight. But as far as tonight is concerned, I'm going for Mr. First Place here, Juju Bean. 2004 uh, who first placed um, a standard challenge on MTGO with a mono white reanimator deck that is just happening to splash a little bit of red for only one card fable of the mirror breaker the rest of the deck is just mono white and what is really interesting to me about this particular um, deck is that I was literally brewing this exact same thing minus fable of the mirror breaker the day before like i was going to i was going to post this video on the channel even before i saw this and then i i went on twitter one morning and i was like wow that's literally my list except they've splashed red for fable of the mirror breaker holy crap uh, and so the, you know th those two things coming together just made it an obvious choice for tonight's video so um i'm not going to show you the deck list here we're going to jump straight into it on the client. And without further ado, well, let's jump into tonight's brew. Mm, I will play a couple of games in best of three with Mr. Juju Bean's Boris version. And then I'll show you what I was brewing before I uh, even saw that post by Fire Shoes right after. So stick around to the end. But as far as Juju Bean 2004 is concerned... Uh, what a brew. What a nice brew. Um, I always enjoy some best of three gameplay footage, so I hope you guys do as well. We're going to be diving into some best of three. And what I like about best of three decks is that they often play a lot of four ofs because it's like the, the strongest best cards in the deck. But then you can, you know, when you're sideboarding, cut one or two of each of the th of the four ofs and bring in some some stuff and i think his sideboard is fantastic and really well uh set up against the the meta right now so but we'll have a look at that towards the end as far as the main deck is concerned we've got a couple of fateful absences uh two uh, sorry a full playset of rafine's informant which is card number one in the deck as far as putting your reanimation targets in the graveyard mm. When it enters the battlefield, it connives. So connive says that uh, you draw a card and discard a card. So if you've got uh, Sanctuary Warden in your hand on, you know, turn two, you play your Rafine's Informant, mill, uh, or, you know, put Sanctuary Warden into your graveyard after you've drawn a card off of the connive from Rafine's Informant. Um, then we've got a full playset of the Spirited Companion for some card draw and a sneaky one of Reckon a Bank Buster. I would like to take your attention to the fact that Mr. Juju Bean over here is still not running mech hangers in the mana base. I just can't, I don't understand when people finally catch on to the fact that you can crew your freaking vehicles with the land. But anyway, um, onto the three drops, we have another eight cards. So alongside Rafine's informants, that's four, eight, twelve cards that are made just to mill your reanimation target or you know to, to place your reanimation targets into the graveyard so the restoration of a ganjo uh, not only can um, help us make your next land drop 
will also have the ability to discard a card and return target permanent card with mana value two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield so quite nice to play out your spirited companion maybe on turn two the opponent attacks you with something uh, you block with the spirited companion the following turn you can discard your sanctuary warden bring back your spirited companion draw another card and put the sanctuary warden where it needs to be but don't forget we don't only have sanctuary warden as a reanimation target in this specific version of the deck he's also running a full playset of ao which i found very interesting because uh in my version well, we'll see my version towards the end but um a little bit of card draw via the spirited companion and reckon a bank buster but uh the chapter two of uh, Restoration of Iganjo and the Rafine's Informant Connive is not the only way that we have of putting these cards in the yard where we want them. Of course, the splash in the deck is for Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which, uh, you know, we all know at this point. What a card. 10 out of 10, highly recommend. If you have still not crafted yourself a full playset of this thing, what are you doing? It's uh, There's a probability that it might even get banned in which case you'd get your wild cards back. So if you haven't got a full place of Fable yet, I highly recommend that you do so. The 2-2 two -two red goblin shaman creature token with, uh, you know, that makes a treasure token whenever it attacks will allow you to play this out on turn three. On turn four, you discard your Sanctuary Warden and play a land. Swing in with your goblin. That'll bring you five mana which means you can invoke justice on turn four and bring back your Sanctuary Warden or your AO on turn four with four counters on it, etc., etc. Um, then we've got a full playset of the Wandering Emperor for some removal of the, the minus two more often than not, but it obviously synergizes very nicely with Sanctuary Warden because whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, you may remove a counter from a creature or planeswalker, and then you draw a card and create a 1 1 citizen creature token. So you can continuously add plus one plus one counters to your Sanctuary Warden with the Wandering Emperor that then will later be taken away again when it attacks so that you can continue to draw cards and of course you can also remove um loyalty counters off of your planeswalker to do the very same thing so it makes sense that there's a full playset of the wandering emperor in the four drop slot uh the aforementioned ao here is a four of which i find a little bit funky but i have not edited uh mr juju beans brew one bit this is exactly as you would find it on the website I don't know if I would run a full play set of AO, but again, it's best of three. So, you know, when you have all these four obs, you can like, I don't know, go down to two of this and put in something else. So I, I kind of get it, but it seems a little bit much to me to have eight, five drops. Um, but it is obviously very strong when it dies. You can find yourself uh, any of these cards here in the, in the, you know, first two columns of the brew. So... Uh, as well as just being uh, an obviously great reanimation target and uh, a very strong vigilance flying threat. But then, the main card of the deck, Invoke Justice. We've seen this a lot in our Naya brews. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning part of the introduction, you can return a target permanent card, so don't forget that that could mean also you bank, you know, a permanent. So, you know, it could also just be a Wandering Emperor, but of course, most of the time we're trying to reanimate one of these two. Uh, and then you put, distribute four plus one plus one counters among any creatures or uh, vehicles um, target player controls. And then the Sanctuary Warden, which happens to also be one of the best uh, copy targets for uh, Reflection of Kiki-Jiki here on the top end. Uh, as far as the mana base is concerned, running 25 lands, average mana value 3.6%. Uh, he's gone for a full playset of Jetmir's Gardens. There's really nothing of green to cast, so I, I'm assuming it's just in here to have an additional red source for the Fable and to have something to cycle when you need to draw a land. I may have gone a little bit differently about things if it was my uh, brew, but again, not editing anything uh, from the original version. Then there's one Eganjo, one Sock and Zan, uh, and a bunch of different uh, duels and basics. As far as the sideboard is concerned, some interesting choices. Uh, I'm assuming I haven't been looking too much at proper like big tournament results. Selesnya enchantments is a real big problem in best of one, but it's not that 
prevalent in best of three, but I guess having a uh, way to deal with enchant, I, I mean, it's just a sneaky one of uh, destroy evil. Then we've got two more fateful absences. If we're up to me, I might go down one fateful, up one destroy evil in the sideboard, but that would bring our total fateful absence to four, potentially. A uh, couple more bank busters, one unlicensed Hearst for all the graveyard shenanigan decks. Full place at a wedding announcement. Uh, and then three farewells and one march of otherworldly light. Very nice little sideboard uh, with some things that I'm not entirely sure why they were chosen, but I'm sure we'll find out during tonight's gameplay footage. I'm going in entirely blind. I have not played with the deck at all, um, but I also really enjoy doing that for you guys and, and just, you know, basically putting myself in your um, shoes where you to decide when you see these um, results go up on the website uh that you want to actually play this deck whether it's it's worth your while and so that is uh juju bean 2004's brew i think it's about time to jump into some games we will be taking this for a spin on the ranked ladder in best of three let's go of course, as always at this point in my videos is when I do a little bit of self-promotion. So if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, kindly consider doing so. Of course, you could also like the video, leave a comment, hit the bell icon, share it around to all your friends. Uh, join the Discord community. What have I missed? That's it. And I'm done. And thank you. Thank you for doing so. It means the world to me. We're getting so close to that 800 subs, guys. That's a mulligan. Rafine's informant. Uh oh, this could be graveyard trespasser. Well, we'll take the risk. Really? Fable? I've also got a Fable. Harumaki. Harumaki. Playing Jund. Shelly, put a stop on your upkeep. Ah, oh, too late. The blood token holding our priority off of the treasure. Wait, have I picked the right card? Uh, 
I like that he's used up his uh, soul transfer. Of course, he's got another exile effect. Of course. Why wouldn't you? Disgusting. my people must contend with me. Bye-bye. You are not much of a roadblock. We're gonna try and do the double kiki-jiki thing. Once you've got two of them on the board, you can do some pretty stupid stuff. Put a stop on the opponent's end step so we can do said thing. Okay, we're not going to be allowed to do so because of Liliana. It's honestly just unbelievable how often the opponent just has exactly the right card in his hand to do exactly the thing that they need to do. It's just unbelievable. All right, so Jund probably got geeks and things in his deck. I think we should probably bring in at least one farewell. Uh, we need more ways of getting rid of um, Shieldred. I want to bring in uh, one more way of... These Rafine's informants, we've got enough ways of milling our stuff into the graveyard. Let's get rid of that and bring in the Lion Sash. One of those, a hearse. We could even, we could even go double, double winning announcement. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Just always exactly what they needed in their hand on the spot every single time. Let's see if we can win game two. Maybe we'll get that lucky this time around. We're also on the play. This card is insane. It's just so broken. Um, 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 um. for it that's cool and we're holding up destroy evil in case he plays a shield right now trespasser Bye.
night time. That's fine. Happy to help, but I'm taking the credit when we win. Booyah, Kasha, baby. Okay, game two goes to yours truly. Uh hmm. <laughs> I wish I had a second unlicensed first, honestly. Wait, what did I just do? What just happened there? I removed the Wandering Emperor and then I clicked on something by mistake. No, I can't tell what it was. I wanted to bring in a bank buster. Uh, what, 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 what? What, what just happened there? I took out a wandering emperor. And I wanted to bring in a bank buster, but I can't tell what I clicked by mistake. Was it one sanctuary warden? Yes, it was. Okay, so bank buster. Is that too few reanimation targets for the invoke justice? Might just be. Let's 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 stay with uh let's stay with um, okay, never mind, never mind. I'm okay with that. That's fine. Mm. Okay, we need a third land, but if we get it, we're good. Course we don't get it. Oh, that's terrible. It's gonna be our good friend Obnixilis. I would be pretty disappointed. Whew. Table's bad, but it's not terrible. Discards a harvester. Takes invoke justice for sure. Guaranteed. I mean I probably would. There we go. Sax the th the dude. Wow. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Another duress. Gross. Not looking great so far. Ha 
has Gix mana. Trespasser. Probably should have uh this oh wow. Fine. I probably should have killed the Kiki Jiki with my uh fateful absence. Probably. Almost certainly actually. I was so sure he would copy the Trespasser, honestly. I guess he needs the mana for whatever reason. Which is quite terrifying. Wow. That's nice. Ew. Harvester, copy the harvester with the kiki jiki. Destroy my AO. Blah 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 blah. I should have killed that kiki jiki when I had the chance. Okay, goes for the other one. Makes sense. I want as many chump blockers as possible, which is why I didn't go with two creatures attacking. I haven't found a single one of our wardens. At least we found Ao. And the two Wedding announcements we brought in were found almost instantly. That's nice. Uh, let's go for... The card draw. There you are. Crowd goes wild. <clears throat> Couple of misplays maybe on my behalf, but I think we did pretty well there, sideboard wise and everything. A little bit decreasing from our reanimation plan by removing the main targets, namely AO and Sanctuary Warden, but bringing in things that really helped against the matchup. Uh, for a second there, I thought we were going to get screwed, but uh, yeah, opponent felt the need to scoop it up. And now we are back in the 90 percentile. On to match number two, game number four. Well done, Juju Bean. I like your list. I like it a lot. 
not only because it's very similar to something I was brewing before I even saw it, but just because uh, you won a standard challenge on MTGO, and that is commendable, very commendable. I may need to at you. I, I hope you have a YouTube or a Twitter or something so that you see this video. Well deserved. Well, okay, yeah, sure. I'll actually keep that, believe it or not. Plenty of stuff to discard to a fable. And more probability of chance that we'll actually top deck something good once we've um, played out. Okay, forget I said that. Find another land as if we needed that. And it looks like we're playing mono black. Cut down, blah, blah, blah. This guy's on 80%. It's like when you when you burn two mana to destroy a creature that would have dealt you two damage. Oh my lordy lord. Another freaking two lands off the top. What a crock of shit. If he plays... Um, Graveyard Trespasser, now I'm going to be very disappointed. Oh, baby. Sanctuary Warden number two. Bad, not bad. You better remove that reflection or you're sucker rude, my friend. And Invoke Despair won't cut it right now. You'll just get rid of a token and I'll get rid of the restoration over the other enchantment on the battlefield, which is Kiki Jiki. Kiki Jiki. Leaves me with one mana available. Down to seven. my friend you did you so did yeah that that's not gonna cut it <laughs> no problem you're still dead let's concede thank you all right, mono black, mono black shield red bullshit. Um, let's go for maybe a few less. Ah, these Rafines informants honestly don't like. I guess they're just in there for exactly this, like sideboard action. Hearse? Nah, no hearse. We don't need hearse in this version. We need. Uh, I think we may need to bring in couple of wedding announcements with some chump block action. One more bank buster and... Actually, no, we don't need the bank buster. I don't think we need it at all, actually. Mm. 
Let's just leave it with a one of and bring in an uh, just one copy of Farewell. I think that's, that's the way to go about things. J -j -j -zo. J -Z -O. J -J -Zo. Yeah. Mulligan's down. Double Emperor is pretty nice, especially because they're running shakedowns, shakedown heavy. Darshi blows. They have had the perfect curve and have shouldered in hand as well. It's uh, not entirely unlikely. That's nice. That's fine. We can get to some Emperor shenanigans. question is, do we kill the sleeper? Nah, let's bring in the Emperor and just take out the Shakedown Heavy. We take four, and then we can destroy evil the sleeper. I am the Emperor of Tamigawa, and I will protect my people. You're done. Or if we top deck another land, we just go for the Sanctuary Warden. I guess that's that. May your blade strike true. Emperor number two at the ready. No invoke. So fine. That's actually just totally fine with me. Such a busted planeswalker. Never ceases to amaze me. This is what you get for hurting my people. Now we got some warden action. I have got new moves to teach you. I have got new moves to teach you. Guess you could go for invoke now. Okay, it doesn't have it. <gasps> oh, 
I was hoping you'd do that, because now I'm going to draw an Invoke Despair, uh, Invoke Justice, and you are going to wish you never did that. One shield counter. Let's get rid of one from here. Okay, flooding a tiny bit there. We're just gonna keep this jet mirrors as a way of. Ew! All right, a very swift uh, schooling there. We just absolutely destroyed our two opponents. Completely loving invoke justice in every freaking way shape or form but now we've arrived at the point in the night where we've uh, proven that juju beans brew here is really really sweet as far as best of three is concerned i can see how he won that standard challenge um let's dive into my personal deck the one that i was brewing up even before i saw this uh one i've simply named justice is served mono white trying to do very much the same things but of course, this is a brew lab video. We're going tribal. This is an angel tribal deck. Mono white angels. Uh, but that is still using a full place of invoke justice. And uh, we've got, uh, of course, Jada, Font of Hope. We've got the Inspiring Overseer for some card draw, as well as just being another angel, which when dropped on top of Jada will come into play as a 3-2, gain your life and draw your card. We've got the Sarah Paragon, which is going to help us recast our permanents from the graveyard um, with mana value 3 or less. So, you know, Inspiring Overseer, your Restoration of a Gunjo, your Rafine's Informant, which is the one non-angel. And because we don't have Fable of the Mirror Breaker, we needed one additional way of milling our Sanctuary Wardens and things into the graveyard. So we've got Rafine's Informant, the Restoration of a Gunjo to put the Sanctuary Warden where it needs to be. Uh, still sneaky one of Wandering Emperor. We may end up cutting something to just put in another one of. You saw how strong it was in those last couple of games. But for now, I'm just preferring the Sarah Paragon because of the Angel Tribal theme. Uh, as far as removal is concerned, a fair bit and nicely versatile. Just kind of two of each doing all sorts of different things. Uh, Destroy Evil, we know, enchantments. Uh, shield reds and whatnot, Fateful Absence, Planeswalkers, uh, Valorous Stance, maybe sometimes we give one of our angels uh, indestructible, otherwise we can also destroy a creature with toughness 4 or greater, and then a couple of marches because they're so freaking good, and you know, artifacts as well, sometimes we run into some of those pesky pesky Oni Cult Anvil decks. Um, yeah, I mean, stuff to mill angels into yard, Rafine's Informant Restoration, the Angels themselves, quite a few of them, the big reanimator spell, and then a sneaky one of Planeswalker. Uh, I've gone with the, more than my usual number of Aganjos because of the um, uh, Sarah Paragon. You can discard them and do the thing and then bring them back again later. Usually I run like a two of, but I've gone with a three of, and then a sneaky one of Crystal Grotto just for some scry action. And that is the best of one sort of mono white version of what we just played, uh, but with a very strong angel tribal theme. When we bring in, uh, you know, a Sarah Paragon on turn four on top of a Giada and an Inspiring Overseer, and it comes into play as like a five, seven or something, or a, a five, six, <laughs> it starts to feel really, really good. And so let's jump into some. Uh, let's see how we're doing for time yeah we've already arrived at the 45 minute mark so we'll probably have like one or two games i don't want to go too late but i've also been getting some incredibly fun wins with that and then at bonus bonus feature a quick version two of uh, you know i always have once i get settled on a, on a specific brew i kind of tinker on a little bit more Justice Served has a version 2 that I'm working on as well. I'll just briefly show you that before we call it a night. Mm, 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 mm. By the way, I did mention it briefly in yesterday's video, but I am going to London 
uh, for four nights or so with my wife and my in-laws and my son, a little sort of family getaway. Uh, I'm leaving on the 29th. I'm going to try and pre-record a few videos and put them up on the channel uh, ahead of time. Hopefully, uh, I'll have enough content pre-recorded to cover the entire time that I'm away. If I don't, uh, and you start to see some some content missing off of the channel, now you know why. Let's run it into a counter spell. I don't really mind. We can bring it back with the restoration. Mr. 92 cards. Wow. Grixis 90 and uh, Grixis 100 card. Oh. oh, that's exiled. Hey, we got a backup. No. Okay, cool. Put one of those cards in your hand. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so at least he's kind of semi-tapped out. We can. I mean, there's not much he's going to be countering with a uh, with that. Probably should have actually gone with the restoration because you'll probably just remove this right now but i always have this hope that people that run 100 card decks don't get exactly what they need when they need it okay no wandering emperor Mum Slayer with a deluge, which I don't know why he didn't cast last turn. Maybe he just didn't have it. <clears throat> Down to eight. Restoration. Hits the board. We're still holding up a, a Ganjo because Giada's legendary. I mean, we, we would have had the mana for it anyway, but something I always like to mention. Disgusting. Thanks, Shuffler. We needed another land there. That was really just exactly what we needed. <laughs> Six, seven, eight, nine, ten lands in the top uh, 15 cards of our library. Especially after we've just hit a sweeper. It's just exactly what we needed. Perfect. Thank you. If I top deck another land, I'll probably just concede. Oh, ho! Okay. If you've got another Meetook, uh, it's going to need to do some serious damage. Okay. Wow. It's like you just you just never know what's coming with these decks. It could be anything. It doesn't have enough mana to go for another right of oblivion quite yet. Well, whereas we have a buttload of mana. I mean how how much how many lands do you even run in a hundred card pile? It's even more than a Yorion pile. Oh lol! Thanks, deck. Thank you, deck. We we really needed that. Like, just exactly what I needed was another land right there. Eleven lands in the top the top top twenty. What a joke! I'm 
I'm getting very close to conceding. I just don't actually ever know how it is that they managed to do this. Like, actually find the cards that they need. You just fill your deck with removal. I guess that's, that's one way of doing it. Find a land. I got enough mana. Oh my. Yeah. Just. Just give me a break. <laughs> like. That is. Just the, the thing that gets me the most. Like. Uh. Those of you who've been following me for a long time, we run into these people once every now and again, like these 100 card pile guys. And I lose to them more often than I care to admit. And I just don't understand how it is even possible that they get what they need when they need it. It's like, how? How? Let me know in the comments. Blows my mind. It goes against everything I know about this game. But we're going to do one more match just uh, for the sake of, uh, you know, for the sake of it, because I cannot just end on a defeat like that. Absolute nonsense. We drew, like, all the lands in our deck, and then uh, the opponent only drew exactly what they needed. Disgusting. Disgusting. Looks like mono black here yeah, with Liliana sleeves. Okay, forget I said anything. It is Selesnia. Now, if they have something like borrowed time for the Paragon, we've got the March. Even better. Some sort of a uh, Selesnya mid-range pile. Trying to be deceiving with his... Uh... Oh, wow. Until the multiverse is won, we will fight to make it so. A Johnny pile. Okay. Phyrexia's might courses through you. Very interesting.
Bye bye. In the end, there will only be Phyrexia. Oof, that's painful. That's very painful. Light clap for the opponent. That was freaking sweet. That was freaking sweet. I need to copy that. I'm going to copy that. But you know, it is what it is. We've run out of time. I I, I wish my brew had performed better. I promise you, I've been getting some freaking sweet wins with this one. Streamer's curse. It is what it is. I I lost there twice in a row. You'll just have to take my word for it. It it's definitely. Uh, it's definitely a thing. Angel, mono white angel tribal with invoke justice. Go, go take it for a spin on the ladder and let me know in the comments how it performed for you. That was just a bit of bad luck. But, um, as far as a little bit of bonus version two, uh, trying to, okay, let's not go tribal, but with the same sort of idea. Um, so no angels in this one other than, you know, Sanctuary Warden and Sarah Paragon, but leaning more heavily on um, the uh, Wandering Emperors, the AOs, t stealing a little bit, a uh, few bits and bobs from um, the Boros version we played in Best of Three at the beginning of the video. Uh, having Rafine's Informant and the Restoration of Eganjo again to discard our main reanimation targets, but then having, uh, you know, Wedding Announcements, more removal. Uh, a sneaky one of Curse of Silence. I think we may need to do devote an entire video to this particular version uh, in the coming days, so stay tuned for that. But that is going to be it for tonight's gameplay footage. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you all tomorrow with another fresh, fresh brew. And until then, this is Lone Fox from the Brew Lab, signing out. Peace, y'all.